Hey folks, uh, this is Ben Gessel. Um, just um, had some more thoughts tonight that I might share with you. Um, yeah, it's just kind of a little bit warm still and hard to sleep, but uh, yeah. Anyway, you know, um, The funny thing about YouTube is that there, there are so many channels, right? It's fun to try to find, it is fun to try to find new channels sometimes that, you know, you don't know about, and there's just there's so many of them, you know, but it's fun to find stuff, you know, there's always stuff, that you can, it's just, it's just the place to, to look for a lot of new stuff sometimes, I mean, it used to be that you go to a library and look for you know, books and that you didn't know about. It would look kind of cool. And many other places like that, you know, music. And, you know, YouTube is just, it has everything all in one place, which is nice. And you can still go to all these other things and find new stuff. And, you know, YouTube isn't taking away any of that stuff. It's just, it's great to find so many different kinds of things all in one place online. But that being said, okay, that being said, that the, it's still a great place to surf, basically. Um, there are a lot of things that are, you know, might come up, come along. We think of Wikipedia, perhaps, in this regard. Uh, you know, um, well, basically, uh, what was it? Fake news. <laughs> we know about fake news, right? It's uh, kind of a buzzword. You know, but we also know, you know that. Sometimes, here and there, on occasion, Wikipedia doesn't always um, explain things as thoroughly as we would like on certain maybe scholarly subjects, or maybe there are some minor errors in certain Wikipedia articles that need to be corrected. And, you know, they, they come, I can't remember the guy that's in charge of Wikipedia, um, but he's come out, you know, well, there's, he, you're sure he's... That, they say it, you know, the different Wikipedia pages. There's like a scale of, of how, um, how accurate they are. By the way, I decided to uh, film my fan here with some stars just to kind of go with something a little different. Um, I find fans to be a little bit um, comforting, perhaps. Just gotten used to the sound of them. But uh, anyway. Um, and I just like a lot of the lot of the dark stuff, but basically, so I've been you know watching some stuff that's religious in nature, and you'll see you know where I'm going here in a second. I you know I'm getting, I take my time sometimes getting to the point. I I know, <laughs> but um, but it's all you know this is all important stuff you know to to hear. I think it's just that you know. If you are interested in religion, and some people, as a topic, they're more interested, for instance, in certain topics like politics or religion or whatever it is, but, but a lot of times it isn't necessarily the topic itself that we want to see more of. Sometimes it's, it's more a subtopic within that topic, or it's a, um, a viewpoint that we prefer um, watching things from. Certainly, YouTube can understand the difference between a conservative and a liberal. So if you're a liberal, you want to see things on YouTube from a liberal standpoint, or you want people to, you know, you want to watch people that are defending liberal ideas. The same thing is true if you're conservative, conservative ideas. The same also applies with religion to different religions um, and how different religions see each other people in these religions. So if you're if you're Jewish, very Orthodox Jewish person, and you're very interested in Judaism, it would be very natural to want to see some things by a rabbi that you like a lot. Some rabbis you probably wouldn't want to, you know, you know, watch. But there's certain, you know, I know there's definitely some that you would want to watch, or you want to maybe see a conversation with a Jewish person, a rabbi that you like, and talking to someone about Judaism in a constructive manner, perhaps, or in a, you know, this is the, what 
the law of Moses was, or whatever it is, but whatever, you know, the same would apply to if you're Catholic, or if you're LDS, or if you're, you know, whatever. And what YouTube doesn't always take into account is, what's your religion? <laughs> Something as simple as, what's your religion? And also, um, based on your uh, comments, perhaps, or com based on your viewing history, or habits, um, you know, um, it could be that you you watch a bunch of stuff because you hate, you absolutely hate some religion, or you hate the other, you know, it's easy in politics to think in terms of conservative versus liberal, but of course there are many other kinds of, of political alliances. It's just that that's maybe very, um, it's a very big deal in the United States, right? The, the right versus the left kind of thing. But with religion, of course, there's many different parties. And uh, even will, will YouTube, I don't know how they, in their uh, recommended videos, how do they determine what they think we want to watch? They don't, they don't get it right. I mean, I, I think it's, I, I, I don't expect them to get it right. It would be nice if they had a, a little bit better, um, was it log not logarithm, but a better formula or better, you know, they, they, you know, if you, um, if there's a pattern, if there's a pattern of certain types of videos you want to watch, you two should notice that, but maybe it might be better to have something in the future on YouTube where, and this is for all you YouTube folks that see this video, and this is a suggestion. I should probably actually put this as an email. But you should have, um, among other categories, two different categories of recommended videos. One category could be YouTube videos you love to hate. <laughs> okay. YouTube video. It could be like you absolutely hate America's Funniest Home Videos. You hate it. But you still watch it a lot. Why? Because you love to hate it. <laughs> you love that love the feel thing that you can expect that there'll be something on there that will just bug the crud out of you, but you'll still want to watch it over and over again because it it's very much expected. You you expect that thing to be you know irritated by. <laughs> and so you know. Um or Gordon Ramsay, you absolutely hate his swearing, you hate how angry he is, but you love his cooking, and you just find him to be a very interesting British, Scottish, whatever person. <laughs> we'll say British. It's kind of both English and Scottish, but let's not get into that right now. Anyway, um, so yeah, I mean, like, it's, it's just, YouTube isn't perfect, I know, but it would be great if they maybe figured those things out. And of course, aside from the videos, you love to hate the videos that you just love, period. So you actually feel pleasant feelings when you watch some videos and you feel unpleasant emotions when you feel watch other videos. And sometimes some of us like to watch stuff that makes us you know, feel unpleasant. Why? Because we're human and we sometimes want to correct things in the world. We think that maybe we can correct them by watching YouTube videos. Well, at least we can more aware of them. But, you know, that's the... Yeah, yeah. Well, like, you know, obviously one of the big things in that regard is conspiracy theory stuff. I know. But it's just... It's just... Um, when you're in that mood to relax, what, what is there to watch on YouTube? And, you know, that's another thing I wanted to mention here, too. What's there to watch? Well, there's not really much to watch on TV if you're... Um, my opinion, choosier and more intelligent, and you are not. You watch march to the beat of your own drummer. You find a lot of TV to be very, not, at all, um, something that makes you curious about life. <laughs> it's quite the opposite. It's something that kind of dulls you, dulls your mind. And, I don't know, like, like, what, what do you, what do you do? What do you do? Well, you know, I mean, like, like, I, I personally have, um, I don't know, my 
my computer screen went off. I personally have probably over like 200, just a lot of YouTube videos. Just a lot of them. And I, pr I just rarely watch most of them. But I have them, you know, I have them, you know, subscribed, I've subscribed to them so I can, you know, say, hey, you know, if I'm bored, here's something that I might be able to see. But I just don't watch them very often. And I used to think when I was a little younger that, you know, kind of figuring out YouTube more, I used to think, oh, I'm offending this person if I don't watch their stuff all the time. No, you're not offending them. Yeah, uh, there's all that financial thing about YouTube with advertisements and things. But you're not offending anyone. <laughs> you know, I'm I. You know, I don't I don't I don't notice when some when my when my forty something subscribers don't watch something of mine. I don't, I just, you know, how, how, I mean, like, you know, so many, so many things that you can do in a day. I have a few enough subscribers that maybe I keep thinking I would like it if I have had more views, you know, and I know how I can do that, but it just, it's like, it takes money to get better equipment and you have to da 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 da, -da and I like having just videos that are not ed edited and deaded up and stuff, but, um, you know, but, um, but what if all your YouTube channels, what if them, what if you're just getting tired of those, you know, those animal videos? Or what if you're getting tired of cutesy, yeah, the cutesy thing, right? The lion is friends with the zebra or something. Those are actually pretty fun still. I, I never, you know, it just depends on the mood I'm in, but, it's, you know, it's a great, it's one of the best things about YouTube is those kind of animal videos. But, but yeah, what if you're just getting bored by your channels? I know I keep coming back to this, and you know it's hard for me to have a clear answer about this, but you know there's always the surfing element that does take a lot of time to find stuff that you like. There's always the recommended channels, but the recommended channels are generally a lot, quite a bit like something that you're already watching. Not always, but um, in the you know I mean you could just put in a subject that you are interested in, and you'll find. New YouTube channels. We just don't think to do that sometimes. I suppose maybe one of the best ways of handling YouTube, but that's something for my own sake. This is my own. I should take this to heart. Is that you know I know what I like the most, what I'm interested in the most in life, and there's tons of there's so many things I'm interested in. But but you know to be honest, one of the things that I'm often looking up on YouTube are things that are mysterious. Right, it, it all depends, but but a lot of times, if if I'm looking at new new YouTube channels, um, things that I have a hard time finding a good high quality channel, in my opinion, it's things that are mysterious, not necessarily frightening. The frightening thing is for every one channel, you're like whoa, for every one, one video, you're just like wow, this is whoa, this is oh my gosh, there's thousands and thousands of crap. And it's kind of the same thing with horror, the horror genre. And it's just not very healthy to watch that stuff a lot anyway. Uh, spiritually in other ways. But it, so it's mysterious stuff. It's a mysterious thing could be scientific, but it's often not. It could be supernatural. It could be, you know, emotional. It could be historical. It could be uh, something else. But, um, you know, it sounds evil, but like something like numerology. Why is, I like, guess there's some other aspects to numbers beyond just being numbers. Numerology might be associated with the occult and with astrology and all those other things that are so considered so evil by so many, I don't know. And, and, you know, I, I'll be honest, like, I have never, I have never, <laughs> I, I don't plan to, I've, I've never had a seance. I've never talked to a, you know, person that I just don't know but you know I have looked up things like is there a meaning to the number one or two or three sure of course you know I, I'm familiar a little bit with the Kabbalah but I don't know you know like 
you know, stuff that, you know, I don't know. I've heard of things like the lesser key of Solomon and the greater key of Solomon. These, you know, magical things. And, but I, I, I haven't read them. I don't plan on reading them. That's, But I, I know their existence. and I, I know a lot of theories about these meanings behind numbers. But I, I mention this because sometimes when it comes right down to it, at least for me, um, the, um, the things that I would like to see more of on YouTube are things that are, are just maybe... Um, yeah, they're just more interesting. The, the things that, you know... I, I'm sometimes interested in scientific things, but not, not always, of course. And with music, it's more just more about something emotional. Or, uh, you know, other things too, but, uh, but with them... Um, so, you know, like, like there's some, some channels that have, like, kind of cater to... I really hate the fact that... I don't know. I hate memes. I hate trends. I hate fads. That's all stupid stuff, but... Um, I almost hate Slenderman. I also, but not quite, because it's one of these commonly talked about things but, from younger people, but... But, yeah, I mean... Wouldn't we all want to see new stuff, even though we have you know tons and tons of YouTube channels? And how do we do that? How do we find the stuff that we want to see? That's really interesting. I mean, that we—it's new stuff. It's—it's it's, we all need variety, and all, all of us, a lot of aspects of life. Sometimes we need variety of people we talk to, of course. But with um, you know, with YouTube channels. We should just type in that subject and see what comes up. And if we can't find anything very good on certain subjects, we can just wait till later. I mean, I remember looking up something like auras, for instance. Do people have different colored auras uh, that are kind of, I don't know, not very visible? But And then what's this thing about people that can read auras? It sounded like a scam or like something, you know, again, I mentioned you know, all this astrology stuff. It sounded... Like something kind of hocus pocusy, um, but but then I thought to myself, like reading an aura, what's so bad about that? It's not witchcraft. It's not you're not playing with evil stuff. All you're doing is is just trying to understand people better in some way. And if you say someone has a blue aura, you're really connecting with this other person has a turquoise aura or something. And they're kind of meant for each other. Well, maybe there's something to that. Maybe being an aura reader... It's been so long since I've... remember watching something like this on YouTube. But maybe, maybe there's something to that. Maybe... You know, maybe it's the new matchmaker thing. But I'm not saying that necessarily that's something that's always be taken super seriously. It just... But it's something that, you know... It's, it's a mysteriousness to it. I certainly believe that we have spirits along with our bodies. And I certainly believe that... Our spirits give off a glow, and we connect with certain people better than others. And if you can, you know, maybe some people can can see that or is connecting, or or is repelling. You know, maybe, you know, I don't know. I, I have no idea. I have no way of knowing that. But it's interesting nonetheless. It's just when someone charges you money for that kind of stuff, it's like, um, I don't know. <laughs> wouldn't Wouldn't you rather be a painter? You know, it's a bit more tangible what you're what you're doing there. Of course, the funny thing is that music is not as physically tangible. We can make CDs and we can have musical instruments that produce music, but music itself, the sound of it, you know, is not necessarily something that's super tangible as well. But we can at least hear it. You know, with uh, the aura thing, it's mm, anyway. Would you pay someone to hypnotize you kind of thing? I don't know, but there are hypnotists out there. I, you know, that's another thing. I mean, there's a lot of unanswered questions about these things. And it's great to be able to look up things like this on YouTube because, let's say, it when you're in the library, you know, it's just why YouTube is sometimes more advantageous than the library. In the library, you can find many different books and many different topics, but you have to wade through the book and it's just kind of time consuming. And... You're reading, you know, you don't want to have, like, tons and tons of books on your on the table you're at. And you're just going through each one, you're skimming through them, 
and you know, I mean, you might have a librarian that comes along occasionally, and I don't know, they're not gonna, I don't know, but it's just something that I just feel is some, something that, that's not done, maybe at libraries. Um, you know, to have a huge stack of books that you're just kind of skimming through, and you, you then you try to put them all back, but you put them in the wrong order. You know, a lot of times it's one book at a time. And, and that's why I'm just like, you know, if you want to just look up dozens of different subjects, you know, all in a row really fast, you do it on YouTube. That's what a lot of people do. You say, I want to watch this, 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 this. And they, they only watch each one of them for five seconds or ten seconds. And it, you know, some people have a very short attention span. It's like YouTube's almost meant for those people. Because <laughs> there's so much content. Um... You know, most people probably won't have listened to this whole video by this point. Those that are still listening, there's something about what I'm saying that's really hitting home here. Of course, one of the biggest things I'm saying, too, is that um, there are reasons why these often heartfelt um, kinds of um, videos, even though they're not maybe as flashy, are more meaningful to people more than what's on TV or something that's like a production thing. Just sometimes, you know, so many times in watching a YouTube video, I think I'll enjoy it. It turns into something kind of pop feeling. It feels like, oh, this is just... Uh, they're kind of catering to, you know... <laughs> tabloids or Hollywood stuff or trends in what people are watching or playing or video games. It's just, you know, it's like, know, they're just trying to make an extra buck. And when you get that feeling when you're watching, a, you know, a YouTube video, oh, it's these guys just making it. They just, they just want to make, it, make up some extra money on this. It, it just puts you off. It's like, you know, I do this because it's for my own reasons. I haven't monetized my channel. You guys will definitely know well in advance if I ever do that. But, you know, I mean, like, it's just, there's a lot of crap on YouTube. It's just a lot of stuff, a lot of ways to waste your time. Not necessarily a total waste of time, but, you know, how do you find the good stuff? And that's nothing that YouTube could do better. They could actually, instead of having, it's all the question, you know, it's a question of what they, you put in your home page, I guess, or what's most visible. But YouTube could do a better job of promoting videos that are more worthwhile. Um, how how do they how do they be able to? Do well, you know, maybe it's what people say. Maybe it's the comments. You know, and the, maybe it's um, if it's an educational thing, or you know, if if um, you could have. There's so many different videos out there that's impossible to see well. But if you know some. They can employ people to watch YouTube videos and, and rate them. and Sure. I mean, um, rate their usefulness. Rate their uh, aesthetic appeal. Or whatever it is. And you could have, I don't know if you want to do it by color, if you could do it by number. You know, you could have some kind of ranking system in place so that people can find videos faster that they really want to see. Even if they have only a handful of views I think that would be a great way of doing things and you know whether it's YouTube or some other website that does something like that we've all wanted something like that a bit more anyway I mean a lot of times I remember growing up you know the thing is that there's that kind of the older mentality of the TV where you have um, you always know what's on channel 7 in my case or channel 4 or 5 or you know when you ch flip that channel there's going to be that kind of content that you're looking for. So, you, you know, whatever, you know. And that was the era of, you know, the analog TV. And I remember that time. And then we had, you know, a bit, a bit more fancier stuff. I never really, I didn't like grow up with very much cable. I think we had it maybe at one time, but it was only when I was a lot older. And, um, you know. But there are so, just, you know, billions, I don't know, hundreds of millions, 
don't know how many different YouTube channels there are, but but there's so many, there's so many videos. How do you make sense of it all? How do you how do you get, how do you get to the stuff that you really want to see, or that you know? And there's YouTube could make it easier on people. Um, I think, but I know they'll keep working on it. Anyway, I will catch you guys later.